In this film, we shall study scientific principles involved in the operation of common home electrical appliances. The modern home has electrical circuits supplying energy to many electrical appliances. The lead-in wires connect to a main switch. From the switch, wires lead to a meter which records the amount of electrical energy used. And then to a fuse box from which branch lines lead to all parts of the house. Each branch with two wires ends in a service outlet. An appliance such as this lamp with a plug completes the circuit. Home electrical appliances such as this electric range, electric roaster, and many others depend on the fact that electricity produces much heat as it passes through certain substances. These electric heating appliances are used in cooking foods, in the sick room, and in laundry work. Of these, the electric iron is the most widely used. The iron illustrates the principle of the common electrical heating appliance. This pressure plate holds the heating element firmly in place. Sheets of mica separate this heating element from the metal of the iron. Mica is an insulator and does not easily conduct electricity. The actual heating is produced in this resistance wire. In this iron, the resistance wire is wound around a sheet of mica. The passage of electrons through the resistance wire produces heat. This heat is transmitted to the base of the iron. The motion of the electrons is a representation of an alternating current. Overheating or dropping an electric iron may cause damage to the heating unit. If the damage is in the resistance wire or in the insulating material, the iron can be restored to usefulness by inserting a new heating unit. Many modern irons include a temperature controlling device called a thermostat. The principle of the thermostat mechanism is shown by this animated drawing. At the top is a strip consisting of two metals welded together. As the iron cools, the strip again straightens out and makes contact. Electrons flow through the circuit. As this iron heats, the lower metal of the strip expands more than the upper metal. This causes the strip to bend and again break the contact. No electrons can flow and the iron cools. This alternate closing and opening of the circuit maintains a nearly constant temperature. This action of a bimetal strip is the principle of most household thermostats. The incandescent electric lamp uses a resistance wire to produce light. The intensity of the light produced by the heated filament depends upon the length, the size, and the material of which the wire is made. Modern floor lamps direct much of the light upward for more even illumination. The fluorescent bulb is more economical because more of the energy is converted into light. A glow bulb switch starts the action. When the lamp is turned on, some electrons flow across the gap in the glow bulb. The heat from this arc causes a bimetal strip to make contact, eliminating the arc. Many electrons now flow through the metallic circuit heating the filaments in the fluorescent bulb. The bimetal strip cools, bends, and opens the upper circuit. At that instant, electrons given off by the heated filament start to flow through the lamp. 
Let us repeat. Lamp switch, glow, contact, heating of filaments, cooling of bimetal strip, breaking of starter circuit, lamp lights. The fluorescent bulb contains mercury vapor molecules shown as black dots. The moving electrons frequently collide with the mercury molecules, causing the molecules to give off invisible ultraviolet radiation. The inside of the glass tube is coated with a fluorescent substance. The short wave ultraviolet radiation strikes this coating and is absorbed. The fluorescent material then emits a longer wave radiation, visible to the eye, and called light. Electricity is also used to operate motors, as in the washing machine, in the dishwasher, in the electric mixer, and in many other appliances of everyday convenience. Of course, all of these motor appliances involve other physical principles besides electricity. The vacuum cleaner is one of the common home appliances driven by a motor. The fan which draws the dirt into the cleaner bag is connected directly to the motor. Let us start the motor and see the fan as it revolves. The revolving part of the motor is called the armature. This armature connects with the electric circuit by means of two graphite rods called brushes. If these brushes become worn down, replacement is easily made by unscrewing the cap over the spring which holds the brush in position. The worn brush is then removed from the spring and a new brush is inserted. The spring and brush are placed in position and the cap replaced. This is a common type of motor repair. The common type of electric refrigerator also depends upon the use of a motor. The electric motor drives a compressor pump. Pipelines connect the compressor with the condenser and with the evaporator. A refrigerant is used which normally is a gas but which can be changed to a liquid by compression. The compressor pump driven by the motor draws the gas molecules from the evaporator above and forces them into the condenser thus compressing the gas. In the condenser heat is withdrawn from the gas by the cooling surfaces. Because of this cooling and the high pressure, the gas molecules condense to a liquid. A fan also driven by the electric motor is sometimes used to carry away this heat. Here we see the compressor pump, and here is the condenser with the fan in back of it. The liquid is forced into the evaporator through a needle valve. Here, under reduced pressure, the liquid evaporates and becomes a gas. In this process, heat is withdrawn from the freezing compartment. The pump again draws the gas from the evaporator and forces it into the condenser where it again liquefies and the cycle begins again. As a result of heat being withdrawn from the freezing compartment, convection currents are set up in the air within the refrigerator. Cold air is heavier than warm air, hence the cold air moves downward from the freezing compartment towards the bottom of the refrigerator. The air which has been warmed by heat taken up from the foods is forced upwards. This warmer air comes in contact with the freezing unit, is cooled, and the circulation continues.
electrical appliances should be properly maintained. This consists of such factors as regular inspection, repair, cleaning, and oiling. Electrical appliances should be carefully selected for sturdiness of construction and economy of operation. Wise selection and proper maintenance will assure long life of operating usefulness. My name is Michael Lambert, 22 years old. I'm 51 years old. My name is Gary Bradshaw. Uh, my name is Jose Malvas. I'm 44. How long have you been a disciple? A month and a week. I've been a disciple in the rescue mission for two months. Um, what are the benefits of the rescue mission? The rescue mission um, allows you um, learn our contact with, with God and um, helps people in if they have addictions or alcohol, um, help helps them find work and helps helps them build confidence. To become a better person, uh, be a Christian, and um, to benefit my life. What brought you to the rescue mission? My aunt. Oh. Um, brought myself here. Um, Need some help? I've lived up here permanently since 95 of September after my grandmother died. I live in, I'm from the Southern California area. I have a mental problems. I'm a schizophrenic. And uh, I've been homeless for about a year and eight months. And I'm trying to get my eyes aside because uh, sometimes I don't know where to run or where to hide. But uh, this is a good facility for someone to be here with the Lord. It's a good place to. Find yourself and find the Lord so you can get ahead on life. So I can try to get my SSI. I'm working on it. And uh, but if God let me bless me one day to get the, like, that kind of life, so I can have my own place, I'll have to be wandering around the streets like a, a guy with no head, you know. And um, it kind of makes a little bit of Mexico better. I like America. The land of the free and the beautiful and the American people. That's why it's called United. My name is Philip Schmaus. Um, I'm 39 years old. Um, I was raised in a Christian-based family. I accepted uh, Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior in sixth grade. The following year, I went to a Christian junior high school. Then, um, from that point on, I was going to church every Sunday. I was part of the youth choir. I never miss Wednesday night youth Bible studies. Um, however, after high school, when I began college, uh, in my pursuit for higher education, I uh, began to slowly stray from God, and I found myself without, uh, without God. I didn't go to church anymore. I no longer fellowship with other Christians, and uh, I basically strayed and was a lost sheep. Um, as I became a young adult and, and started off in my adult life, um, things just began to escalate out of control. Um, there was drinking, sex, drugs, fighting, confrontations with family, friends, and eventually the police. Um, I had a really good career going on and an excellent job, and eventually there would be jail, the loss of a really good career. and than a failed engagement. And um, all of this combined together with a growing meth addiction that, that uh, basically put my life pedal to the metal, spiraling out of control. And uh, three years ago, I found myself jobless. After my failed engagement, I was really depressed and uh, I didn't feel like working anymore. I had. Uh, the company I worked for provided me with stock options and some bonds and a really excellent 401k plan. Well, my failed engagement kicked my meth use into such high gear that I was doing it like daily. I wasn't uh, a weekend warrior party kind of guy anymore. So I wasn't working and uh, I was using every single day. 
and um, in order to pay for my apartment and my utilities, all my bills uh, and my drug habit, I cashed in my 401k and I cashed in the stocks and the bonds that I had invested for my retirement. And I lived on that for three years. I didn't steal for my drugs. I wasn't out hustling. Um, it was part of my monthly budget, the amount of money I was gonna spend every day on my drugs. So my rent was covered, my food was covered, and my drugs was covered. At the end of those three years, um, the money was gone. And eventually I couldn't pay my rent. And eventually I got evicted and I had nowhere to go. I became homeless. Um, I lost all my personal possessions. The only thing I had left was my clothes and my truck. And so for a year, this past year, I began living out of my truck. And uh, basically stayed at the Turlock truck stop rest area because if you park anywhere along a park or anywhere within the city on the side of the road, you know, the cops want to know what are you doing. People reported you being here for a long, long time. So basically that's where I lived was at the truck stop at night and by day I was just uh, kind of wandering, trying to get high, I didn't have money anymore. But my parents planted a seed in me and at least, even though becoming a hardcore meth head and drug addict, I never broke down a stole. Which is, you know, I never got arrested for the drugs, thank God. And uh, so I just wandered around for a year just being a big loser and uh, I couldn't take it anymore. Um, Last October in 2008, I couldn't stand who I'd become. I began wanting to commit suicide. Um, I was ashamed of how my life turned out. I came from a good background. Um, I was a smart guy, I did good in school, and I just had blown my life completely, man. And I didn't see any way out. There was no one to help me at all. And. Uh, I was pulled over on the side somewhere. I think I, I didn't have enough gas to get to the truck stop and was panic stricken. Where am I going to stay? And I just pulled over on some dirt road or whatever, and I began plotting the details of my of my suicide. I was going to get a hose. I was going to find an orchard. I was going to at night pull into an orchard and just tape up a hose to my tailpipe and run it into my cab of my truck and just you know make sure I had a full tank of gas and that's what I was deciding to do and and in thinking of this you know I just started crying and and the next thing I know I returned to the basics and I started to pray and I hadn't talked to God in a long time and uh, um, I cried out and I asked him rescue me I know it's been a long time since I've reported in but father man I need help I don't want to die I'm scared to die I'm a coward and uh, the next day, I went begging my folks to open their door so I could get a shower or something and, and try and get my mom to feed me. And they told me about this place. And so I left there that same day and came and applied for admittance. And, and two days later, they, you know, they took me in and I joined this program. I've been clean and sober in over nine months thanks to this program. Every day since I've been in this program, I've been given the opportunity to reunite with my Heavenly Father. Every day here, I'm, I've been given the opportunity to renew, restore, and rebuild my relationship with God the Father, the Holy Spirit, the Son. Um, I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ is the great shepherd and that he came after this lost sheep. And... Uh, I don't have any regrets how my life has played out. This program has helped me to deal with forgiving myself and accepting uh, everything that's happened to me is meant to be. You know, it's all been part of the main plan. Um, it doesn't matter I've lost everything. It doesn't matter the loss of the career. What matters is that God snatched me back up and brought me back into the fold. And uh, I think he's done that just in time with the way that things are in the world. So I feel blessed and privileged to be here. Just, uh, you know, I don't think there's been a hard part for me. I was so, with, you know, God had to break me completely apart so I could be put back together again. I had to lose everything. And that happens sometimes when God's working with you and people don't realize that. You know, I could have ended up in a wheelchair or hospital. I, I could have been so much worse. I mean, 
I'm just blessed that um, he didn't have to, you know, God sometimes is poking you on the shoulder and poking you on the, and you ignore, and then maybe he'll go like that, you know, to get your attention, and I'm just really blessed that, uh, that I, I woke up, and that, uh, I don't know, life is good, life is good. The program is, um, I'm almost over, I'm almost completed, the program, and uh, they are working with me, helping me with, uh, transitioning back into society, integrating back into society by helping me with job placement and housing placement, which is a relief, yeah. you know. Um, okay.